This is a scripted dialogue based on conversations I've had with a mixture of conservative Christian ministers. In this case, the dialogue is based mostly on one particular minister who had a very good attitude in that he was both candid in expressing his opinions and did not get bent out of shape by my opinions. In fact, we both claim that the other's concept of God is dumb but we didn't let our differences sabotage our dialogue. This is where I think your God, your general God, I hope you're not offended that your God is dumb. Okay, okay, explain that to me. I think your God does not take into account other cultures, whereas my God has figured out what to do about other cultures, about other times in history. If you go back in history, there were cultures where rape was no big deal. Like in Spartan culture, a significant rite of passage for a man was to rape a woman. And if he did that, then he's a man. And if the woman fought him off successfully, then that man was looked down on, if not actually punished or banished. I tried to do some research on Spartan culture to see if rape was indeed a normal rite of passage for their men. I couldn't really confirm it, but certainly Spartan culture was a violent and a male chauvinistic culture. And therefore what? Therefore Christianity is true? Therefore my God is dumb and the Christian God is perceptive? I did not see any logical argument there. Look down upon for failing to rape a woman yeah, because what kind of a man can't rape a woman? Can't even rape a woman. Well, <laughs> I'm glad we're here alone. If somebody walked past the door and heard you say just that sentence, what kind of a man can't rape a woman? That would be very disturbing to them. <laughs> Sorry, that thought just came to my mind because you said it so clearly. And there was a lady that walked by earlier. So, all right, let's get back to what we're talking about. Certainly, there's nothing funny about rape. Yeah, so as I was saying, parts of Spartan society did not have an issue with rape. Some Amazon tribes use murder as a rite of passage. Yeah, I know. Some big city gangs in this country do that also. You know, murder a random person and you're in. Of course, rape is against the law in our country today. But in those societies, it was not against the law. It was approved. Okay, yeah, I, I understand that. Different times, cultures, locations, periods of history with different values. I fail to see his point that my God is dumb because what? Because he doesn't understand different cultures? If that was his point, I'm not sure that I was. Maybe I missed something. But if that was his point, I don't think it's valid at all. My God understands cultures but he does not approve of immoral cultures. He does not accommodate his values to them as the Christian God does, like condoning slavery, for example. Say you're a man living thousands of years in the future. Do you get held to the same standard as today? Yes, 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 I say yes. Rape is wrong for a man a thousand years in the future. Rape is wrong for us today, and rape was wrong back in caveman days. Human nature is human nature. No woman wants to be raped, which by definition is forced sex against her will. Certain values are eternal. But I think it's dumb to overlook cultures. A man raised in a primitive society has no perception of values on his own. He was born in that society, raised in that society, that's all he knows which says that this is okay. You say people have no perception of values on their own, separate from the culture they grew up in. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure there were some cavemen who recognized the value and, and the virtue of respecting women and did not go along with the predominantly male chauvinistic culture. It's like me being in the South in 1850 and I see these people owning slaves my natural instinct will be to realize this is an immoral situation, an immoral culture. People can't own other people.
just because their skin color is different. They can't own other people, period. I would see that. I am held to an eternal standard. You are not. You are swaying with the culture, which is something you Christians always claim you don't do. You tout objective eternal standards of morality and dismiss secular society as subjective morality based on whatever is popular at the time. But that is exactly what you were doing when you invoke culture as a valid excuse for the Bible condoning slavery. Well, like I told you, my God is not fair, and I'm okay with that. I know God is not fair. So, if I go into your office and steal some money, I can say, I know it's not fair to do this, but I can say, that's okay, I'm good with that. How is that any sort of justification for stealing? Just saying, I'm good with that, I'm okay with that. I let God in his wisdom decide what behavior is worth punishing and what is not. I don't get hung up on who's guilty and who isn't. That's not my concern. It should be. But if you find out when you get to God's courtroom that cutting somebody off on the road accidentally is a major offense. Oh, then I would immediately say this is a fantasy world. There is no such God. I can't believe in a God like that. Blaming people for what is an accident. That's ridiculous. You only blame people for what they do intentionally. So you're upset with that scenario? Yes, very upset, very upset. He's going to punish me for cutting somebody off on the road accidentally? Accidents happen, no matter how carefully I drive. Maybe a tree branch fell onto the road. I swerved a bit and cut somebody off. Things happen. God's got to be fair in the afterlife, the cosmic courtroom. Otherwise, that's not a God worthy of worship. But let's say that a guy a thousand years from now looks back at you and asks, how did you not know that a particular behavior was an immoral thing to do? Well, it all depends on what the thing is. Some minor car accident is one thing. Rape or murdering somebody or owning a slave, that's different. It depends on what it is. Stealing is objectively wrong. I mean, there are all kinds of variations. There might be outlier situations where stealing is good or lying is good because it serves a greater good. But, you know, baseline stealing and lying are objectively wrong. What about child molestation? It's absolutely wrong. Do you know that some other cultures think there's nothing wrong with it? Then I think those cultures are immoral. So who's right? Me. I'm right. And any culture that condones sex with children is wrong. What does your God say on that? Well, since I don't have a Bible or any tangible word from him, I follow what I think are his two great voices, reason and compassion. Whatever is reasonable, that's what he supports. Whatever is compassionate, that's what he supports. So that's what I do. And my God tells me that molesting a little kid is going to hurt that kid. It is not compassionate. So I would never do that. And I don't believe in any God or any culture that condones that. But say there's a gray area when a girl turns 14, 15, whatever. For many cultures, it's quite normal for girls to marry when they're that young. Yeah, sure. I know, I know that. And there might well be good reasons for that. So I don't make a judgment for some universal specific age as to when a girl becomes a woman. Culture may well make some difference as to a legitimate marriage age. And I'm sure there are plenty of 30-year-old women who are not as mature as some 15-year-old girls. I'm just saying that a very young child, you know, like 10 years old, having sex or getting married is wrong. Somehow to him, his Christian God is perceptive because he's figured out that there are other cultures with other values. And he has accommodated his laws to those cultures, like allowing slavery. Whereas I think his God is morally bankrupt for not clearly speaking out against slavery. Morally bankrupt for accommodating himself to bad cultures. Instead of transcending culture, and expressing eternal moral values the way a God should.